Today we're going to talk about capacitors. We're going to talk about DC capacitors and briefly hit AC capacitors. I'm going to do another video on these. DC capacitors. I have had several questions and comments about the DC audio 500,000 microfarad capacitor that I've incorporated into my solar system. I seem to be the only one that's really incorporated that and I've had a lot of questions. So, I'm going to de just describe this, its functionality and my thoughts behind uh, it, its uh, uh, purpose within the system. Now, think about think about it in, in terms of, of water. I'm going to give you a little uh, um, metaphor to kind of relate it to. If you, has anybody ever been in the shower and somebody flushed the toilet? I'm sure that's happened a time or two. Um, the plumbing system in that, that particular, uh, when that happens, uh, could not handle the load, okay? Um, you didn't have enough pressure, the pipes weren't big enough, whatever the case may be. When water was drawn off another fixture, the pressure dropped in your shower uh, and, and you felt it in the form of, uh, uh, you, you know, you probably got scolded uh, or, or if somebody did laundry or whatever, you know, you can relate to that. Okay, uh, metaphor number two. Uh, go out in your car, start it up, put it in second gear and stomp it to the floor. See how fast you take off. Then, stop your car, put it in first gear, stomp it to the floor and see how fast you take off. There again, you don't have enough power to push the load from a dead stop when you're in second gear. That's kind of how normal systems are running. They're gauged upon, you know, averages of normal systems, normal operation. But if you want to run peak performance, oversize your wires. You know, I have four aught cables from the battery bank all the way to the inverter, so I get no voltage drop. Um, the other thing is, is you incorporate the DC capacitor. And here's how it works. <clears throat> when I have an AC load, which this goes to, uh, I'm, I've got that wired into the back fed into the shed, which goes underground to the house. Okay, so we're, for, for the purposes here, this is my AC load, and I'm monitoring it here. Currently, refrigerator's running, and it's only pulling 115 amps. Okay and so out of the inverter AC into the uh, uh, 2x4 box which I have a GFI plug there GFI plug through the kilowatt meter to the power strip okay here's what happens refrigerator kicks on amp draw goes through the roof I draw a lot of power off of the inverter. Now the inverter is making up, that's why they call it a 4,000 watt peak. See this one here is, uh, where is it? 2,000 watt nominal 4,000 watt peak. And they make that for loads such as this, refrigerators and such. Um, so when, when wh whatever it is that you're trying to fire up goes from a dead stop into a full bore run, it takes more energy than this normally can provide to keep it running. So, uh, the inverter has to work harder to uh, make up that difference. And, and it, it does it, it does a decent job at it, but it goes and then kicks off, you know, something like that. Not quite that dramatic, but also, um, if this is drawn, then it's drawing off your batteries super hard. So your batteries are pushing hard, your inverter's pushing hard, just to get that piece of equipment up and running. So, incorporate this. This will store a, a large amount of amps, basically. It can expend its energy almost as fast as it can absorb it. Where a battery, and, and here, you, here you go again, here, if, you, if you get one of these, test it. Go ahead and hook up a battery charger to this thing. Charge it up. Watch how fast it, it, it can charge it up. And then de-energize de it. You know, short circuit it. Run a light bulb on it or something. Watch how fast it drains it. But that thing will that thing will absorb and 
and expend its energy very fast. Okay, so it's uh, um, its rate of uh, let's see here. Let me get I'm getting my book out for my batteries. Now batteries uh, can obviously absorb and expend its energy as well, but at a much slower rate. And if I look at my oh, I got a phone call. Um, if I get my uh, battery book out here, it tells me uh, maximum discharge current amps at a two minute rate. So at two minutes, the maximum discharge current on the batteries that I have is 670 amps. At, in two, I can discharge out of each battery two, 670 amps in two minutes. Okay, And obviously, see, the higher you go up in batteries, I know you can't see this, but... You know, this little guy can only do 41 amps, and the battery I have can do 670 amps, okay? And that capacitor can do even more than that, but it's, it's small, so it doesn't have a huge capacity. It can probably do 670 amps in a matter of a few seconds, okay? So when the inverter draws, I'm just going to use this as an indicator, okay, it draws its power and this will expend its energy into the bus bars and help power that. Now if you don't have big 4 aught cable like I do or bus bars, a lot of people don't, what you can do is run the heaviest gauge wire you have directly to the back of your inverter so the power goes straight to there and it'll help. And uh, and, and so that's about it on the DC side. Hopefully that helps. If you have any more questions, let me know. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a video on these uh, AC capacitors. So go ahead and uh, check out that video. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe, uh, rate, um, give me a thumbs up or, you know, uh, response, all that stuff. Appreciate you guys uh, watching my videos. And uh, you know it's all about sharing, sharing the information and the knowledge with each other, so we can uh, we can all learn this stuff and um, and, and so on. Uh, check out the uh, video on the AC capacitors coming up next. Thanks.